Hello. All right. Test. What is up, everybody? Hello. We're just going to let the service for just a quick second because this is an unusual stream here. This is going to be a very unusual stream uh, simply because I'm here to actually talk about uh, something that involves someone making accusations against me that are pretty bizarre considering a, a very long and specific history that we're about to go over with this person. So uh, it's going to be something that will be informative. I think a lot of people are about to learn about uh, a person's behavior, and they're also going to learn a little bit about libertarian history, especially with the Monopoly on <laughs> Violence film. So Fun. you're about to Ooh, actually- a little like uh, Liberty History over here, yeah. Liberty History show. So we're, we're actually <laughs> going to be covering uh, uh, quite a few things uh, as relates to all this. So uh, if you're here, thank you so much. It's it's really, hey, it's been... Uh, welcome. Happy Thursday. Yeah, happy Thursday, right? I'm Thursday, right? It's it's the evening for East Coast. <laughs> it's It's been Thursday. an interesting few days, to say the least, um, with what's been going on with uh, this person. So just to cut to the, the I would chase, say it's escalated. It's been going on it's been for... Going on. When when did it start? I would say I noticed something off around last year, because uh, yeah. Mm. Anyway, we can we can get more into it. Yeah. But um, I would say the last past couple of days, it's really escalated. Yeah. And we really found so many people out there that were just being two faced to us, friends mm -hmm. with us on yeah. our Facebook, our personal Facebook, right? And just hiding there and not really liking us at all. And yeah. then like behind our back, talking, saying stuff about us, like mm -hmm. oh you're cringe or whatever, but mm -hmm. just acting to our face like they're our friends. Right. So. Yeah, it, it's it's so bizarre how people do that. They, they, they'll they friend you on Facebook, but like secretly they actually really hate you and they're and they're talking crap. It's not about bizarre you. to me. Well, I mean, we yeah, can I mean, psycho in. Right. We can cycle out. That. Yeah. So people want to creep. But we're going to go ahead and I'm going to dive into what it is. So as you can see here, the person we're speaking about is Pete Quinones. So. Pete Quinones has taken a turn in his views over the past. Oh, well, I mean, he's taken a turn in his views every you know six or twelve months, but especially of late, of being really serious about his post-libertarian stuff, and the pushback that he's gotten about that has been, you know, across the board from different people. But obviously, there's a specific thing with me here, and of course with Fa. But in the process of talking about the ideas themselves, uh, he's gotten really uh specific about me and, and trying to say things about me that are so impossibly and crazily untrue that it's actually now warranted me bringing up uh, pieces of history that are actually going to be very revelatory about um him his character um and with the things he says so after this you're, and what i'm going to show you is actually going to show um specifically the history that you know I've been involved with, especially with the monopoly on violence, film, it's gonna it's gonna kind of cut down a lot of these things that he's uh, saying uh, about me and us. So I'm gonna go ahead and read the information. We're gonna yeah, cover this is some good. stuff. I think it's time, basically, yeah. just to add on to that to give context, right? Because if you're coming into this, you may be seeing tweets here and there, right? You may see, you may have even seen this post or something else or yeah. a comment about us here and there. So this, our intention here is to just lay out all the context. And you can walk away and make your own, you know, form your own opinion. Yeah, of course. definitely. Of course, obviously form your own opinion, but you're going to find that what we're about to share and you're probably going to want to share this around um, is going to really call into question of what he says. So he says, I only post this because a person has blocked me and spreads lies about me behind my back when they could have confronted me to my face only two weeks ago. So first and foremost, um, <laughs> context confronting <Yes>. two weeks <laughs> ago, this guy is talking about Tom Woods's house party Yeah, for his guests for his you know list supporting listeners at his personal house his house about him right celebrating his own life <laughs> so i don't know in what fantasy land you're living in you like to use fantasy land a lot uh but it is absolutely immature and rude to suggest that i should confront you about my grievances with your ideas and your actions at tom woods's house that's immature what what is that like that is an incredibly sophistic and childish thing. And the people who would actually think that that's a cool thing, like you're one upping them like, Oh yeah, bro. You're so cool, dude. Get down, be humble. What the heck are you talking about? This is absolutely crazy that you would actually think that that's somehow one upmanship to be like, and, and again, notice how he doesn't say where it's at. He's like, he could have got my face where, Oh, okay. Oh, why, why are you putting Tom Woods house in there? Oh, because I don't know how that would look for you with your relationship with Tom if you were saying that you want to get 
into a, a scuffle with me at Tom's house. Okay, not cool. So seriously, like right off the bat, absolutely ridiculous. It's so funny. It's like I'm yeah. literally going there to hang out with my friends. Okay, Tom, Jetta, Mark, the people that were going there. We we're going there to hang out. I'm not going there to hang out with Pete. Right. Why? And plus, what is there to even talk about? When someone, all they do, they don't have arguments. They just slander your name. They just call you names. They just shame you, denigrate you. There's nothing to talk about. With people like that, the response for me, my preference, is just clear disassociation. I just want the truth. If you don't like me, say it to my face, and and we're good. Now I know. Now we don't need to be associated. Now you don't have to be all sophistic and fake like the state, like politicians, and two-faced. And pretending to care, pretending to be all nice and buddy-buddy when you're not. And I'll get into a little more context with my personal history, Pete. It's a little different than than Jack. You, you, you've gone a... a Way far back than me. I, I have a much shorter history. Yeah, so I have a, I have a bit longer later. history, and, and you all are going to find out real soon, so stay <laughs> tuned. So Jack Lloyd has spent a good bit of time on social media calling people statists because they're not anarchists or volunteers or whatever. Um, yeah, I call people who want to <laughs> grow state power statists. Oh. That's, the, um, that's, that's, that's what they're called. They, they want to increase <laughs> the size, scope, and power of the state. Yeah, I've known him. Yeah, known him as and hung it a couple of times and of him for a number of years. Yes, pretty much the entirety of the time okay. you've had any type of relevance of any sort within the liberty sphere. Wow. Jack is all about himself as evidenced by the incredible meltdowns he has when he's even criticizing the slightest. Um, I don't have incredible what meltdowns, dude, when someone says extremely denigrating things about me and my wife or about projects I'm involved with or says, oh, who are you? You're just nobody. And they keep repeating that. Yeah, I get annoyed with that. All and I, I see is generalizations. Say, oh, that's not true. I'm, and I go and I talk right. about the specifics. Yeah. So it's it's absolutely incredible. He uses this this gross language like, oh, he's just he's having a meltdown. Meanwhile, he's on Twitter using one upmanship and calling people, you know, all different types of names, and then he blocks out whatever the cuss words he uses. Okay, that that's not a meltdown when you when you use cuss words at people and call them names and then re repost them and try to, you know, gang up on them. Uh-huh. Okay. So he will name drop the whatever <laughs> out of the people he's met once. Once and shook their hands. What do you mean by name drop, dude? Um, you go to events and you take pictures. You know, like go, someone goes and sees somebody. Like they go see a comedian. They get a picture with them. Or they go see a singer. Or they see like, oh, I got a picture of Ron Paul. I don't sit there and say, oh, I'm best friends with Ron Paul now because I saw him once. Dude, like what are you even talking about, dude? No, name dropping? I There are people who I'm actually friends with and friendly with and, you know, text and call this or that. But that's because I have a relationship. This is just with an ad hoc. It's just all an ad hoc. This, this is all of this sophistry. Is stuff that yeah, absolutely listen. insane. So, <laughs> right. but back to him calling everyone he disagrees with or disagrees with a statist, which I don't even know how that makes sense. Because if I disagree with you on a different thing that's not about the state's growth, I don't call people statists or really. I don't. Yeah, I don't, that's I'm, just blatantly not true. I don't even get it. Um, there are plenty of things that I've disagreed with someone on, <laughs> and you have disagreed, and it's not just calling them a statist, like. You can just see the sophistry and even just the first, what, five sentences? Yeah. First statement, generalization, ad hom, no context, right? Another thing, another generalization, no context, no specifics, no evidence, no screenshots, no receipts. Just It, it reads just like a, a hit piece from the Washington Post or the New York Times when they don't even give the other side of the story, when they don't give context. They don't even give evidence of what even happened. Right. So anyway, let's keep going. Right. We're here to give all that. So he said he's now a proud supporter of the Mises Caucus who have 11,500 members. Woo! And they're seeking to do work within the state, which seems a contradiction of his go-to pejorative oh, yeah. status. <laughs> oh, no. You mean oh. I support my awesome you know, friend Michael Heiss, who literally has done an amazing job of getting together a bunch of people who have Ron Paul revolution fire under their you know, bellies. Yeah, and they're and actually principled. They want right. to end the Fed. They're not afraid to say taxation is theft. Right. And they want to take over the LP. That's the point. Yeah. For the point of the messaging. Yeah. Okay. It's not to be like, oh, we're going to take <laughs> over and we're going to somehow beat the establishment Democrat and Republican Party that has millions, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in established politicians. No, we're not doing that. We're trying to take over in order to take over the messaging in order to continue moving the Overton window. Just like what happened in the start of 2020, right? My body, my choice, life, liberty, property rights, disobey, shall not be infringed, all those things. That is our focus. 
Okay, so if you're over here slandering us, saying all we do is call people status, you know nothing of our work, and you're either ignorant or, in this case, willfully just being a liar, in my opinion. Because we've known Pete, it, we were on his uh, Monopoly on Violence documentary. When I first met Pete, and let me go into this now, if, if that's okay. So mine's really short. I met Pete in Mises U of 2019. It's the first time I met him. I heard about him before I heard his voice on the Tom Woods podcast. I was a regular listener of the Tom Woods show. So I heard his voice here and there along with Scott Horton. I was like, okay, cool. I, he sounds reasonable. I like what he's saying. Uh, I heard he had a, a podcast and I was like, okay, cool. I listened to some of the things. I like what he was talking about. I like some of his tweets and his ideas. Saw he wrote some articles. I was like, cool. This guy's very principled. This is 2019. Uh, when I first met him, I'm like, hey, nice to meet you. I gave him a hug. I was nothing but friendly and building. And actually, since then, I have been nothing but friendly and building. And the only point at this time, it's been the past couple of days that I've been very mad seeing all of these things finally come out that I wasn't even aware of. Um, so going back, that was just me, sis, you, saw him once. Okay, so then back in like 2020, I had all these shutdowns. Then things in 2021 finally opened up. Saw him again at like, I think a libertarian party. No, it was the Tom Woods house party first. And then there he was like, I sent some things. Like, I was like, hey, oh, so good to see you, Pete. Good to see you. And he knows like my name. I've personally like, you know, I've shared with people when I meet them, like, yeah, I intentionally try to stay anonymous. That's what I try to do, right? And friends that I have, they respect that and they understand that. So one of the first things I noticed was <laughs> in front of everybody at the Tom Woods uh, like party, not everybody, but like when I was coming in, he like yells my first name from across the room. That was the first kind of red flag for me. I didn't think much of it, but that was the first sign to me of somebody who doesn't respect me as a person and is something psychologically going on, like wanting to make me feel bad or denigrate me or what. So it's just a small sign. So then from there, I saw him at another uh, like LP event and um, yeah, nothing, you know, never anything directly said to me. So then later I start seeing all these tweets online. Like I'm not tagged directly. Jack's not tagged directly saying stuff like, Oh, uh, they're so cringe. All they do is post pictures of their food and that's all they do. This couple, Jack and Pho. And I'm like, wow, seriously, dude? 2019, I met you nothing but nice. Give you a hug, like treated you like a bro. I was so kind to you. And then you you behind my back, you talk about me like this. It's, it's just so frustrating. So anyway, that's my history. You can see it's very brief. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's why I'm so surprised because it's so brief. I'm like, I, I see you like here and there at events. I'm nothing but nice in building. I appreciate your work. I've shared your work. And you talk about me behind my back like this. This is ridiculous. So the whole idea of why would I spend my time on somebody I don't even know to interrupt my friend's house party, Tom's house party recently. So just going back to that whole thing, it's to me, it just screams of someone really trying to act like they're a victim here. But when you know the context, like, yo, you're not a victim. You're the one stirring the pot. You're the one who initiated the insults. If you want to bring back who started all the insults between us, it was you, Pete. So don't act like you're some victim or some martyr. Yeah. And the funny part is, I'll get into this later, but I didn't even know that he was starting to say this stuff until someone sent me a message about yeah. something on his podcast. And I was like, they're like, are you talking about you? And I'm like, what are you what are you talking about? And I like went and listened to it. I'm like, oh, yeah. okay. He's oh, that's he's right. Fun that of us. The and podcast. I confronted him on Twitter. Yeah. He's like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm like talking about you. I'm like, okay. Anyway, so we're gonna get to that. So he says, and they are seeking to do uh, work within the state, which seems a contradiction go to pejorative of status. Okay, well, uh, as I said already, uh, yeah, I support people actually trying to use one means of reaching out to people using the LP structure to change minds and pipeline down them down yeah, to become it's a not voluntarist. A, it's not and, a contradiction. <laughs> yeah, well, and also it's about actually trying to upend state power and frustrate in every single arena. I'm an all means person in terms of, you know, trying to reach out in political, trying to reach out in education, economics, ethics, unschooling. I do it all. So, you know, what I mean, every single arena, I want to see the best of the best pipeline people to principled liberty. That's how it goes. So he says, know this. If he is in that group, it is to benefit him and him alone. 
Yeah, um, what a bold claim. What? Uh, to, so to benefit me, <laughs> you, me alone. You've been working at the uh, Liberty Room for like quick. over a decade. So I've been doing this for, you know, yeah, <laughs> And helping years people outreach. without pay. They'll right. come to you and be like, oh my gosh, uh, I need help. Right. I need help fundraising yeah. something. Oh, I need help making a documentary. Oh, you have some uh, legal experience. Oh, you have some experience doing public relations. Oh, you have some experience with, you know, social media, making memes. Oh, all these people coming to you and- We'll get into that. <laughs> oh, we're gonna we're gonna get into that. Yeah. So it, it's it's really kind of comedic to me because I mean my self interest is trying to promote liberty. So that's why I support people in in many different ways, whether it's financial or doing photos or helping with promotion, this or that. So it it's really silly to be like, oh, benefit him and him alone when like I don't know. I I literally have been producing content for uh, over ten plus years, doing activism for fifteen, everything from phone banking to door knocking to sign waving. You know, as a student in college and in grad school, <clears throat> and years past on all different levels, connecting people, helping them find resources, helping parents get out of of school so that you know they can actually figure out the laws with the Homeschool Defense Alliance. I, I mean, it is absolutely mind boggling that he would say stuff like this. Yeah. So. I would say a lot of hours that are just, you know, behind yeah. the scenes that you're not going to, hey, guess what? I helped the family right. uh, become unschoolers. You're not going to post that. You're you're right. helping a personal, actual exactly. family get their kids out of the public school system. Yeah. It, it, like, again, it's, this is why the context is so important. And that's why when you're dealing with sophists, it doesn't matter. It's just like anyone who... Uh, won't give you specifics and makes generalizations and abstractions, that's a red flag. You always got to ask, okay, what's the specifics? What's mm -hmm. the evidence here? What's the context? Because otherwise you can just fill your mind with whatever you want of what the actual specifics are. Exactly. So he says the moment they are no longer useful to promote whatever he's promoting or raising money for, they'll be status again. Uh, what are you even talking about, dude? Like, <laughs> it's, See, it's this is why you got to give it's examples, so right? Crazy. You make the claim. It's this so is not an argument. These are up. just assertions. Literally, just there's just no made argument up. here because there's no evidence followed up. I promote all kinds of people of all different things. Whether it's <laughs> I interview them on my show and say, "Hey, check out their campaign," or I, or you know, I, I, I like fund how someone's, David has popcorn. You know, I just noticed. Right, go ahead. yeah, David. <laughs> David. Well, David knows. I could, you know, I don't want to give him too much of a shout here, but David actually is someone who's been around long enough to actually know some of the truth of this stuff. So that's kind of nice. So the the reality is, is that like what he's saying just has like literally zero connection to empirical reality. I support people based on their principles, their character, and how ardent they are for promoting liberty. How on fire are you? How motivated are you to do stuff? And that I've done that across the board, whether it's been, you know, as small as just doing the, the Students for Liberty pictures for six years straight for their your regional conferences or whatever, to, you know, financially supporting people to be able to go to like an LPMC thing or donating things, whether it was, you know, like donating, um, you know, stuff to the LP for their auctions. I do different things in different arenas. It's, it's, it's so like, and you have for there. over a decade. It's oh, just, I mean, I've been doing 15 years. It so just, it's just shows ridiculous. me again. Is it ignorance or willful ignorance or both? <laughs> yeah. So he says, that's it. Sorry for the BS. You really get this from me. But when someone blocks me to spread lies about me that I could prove or false, I tag a couple people in this post, I get the urge to respond. Now, please go back to your regularly scheduled fund. Okay. So <sighs> we're going to go through some uh, some of these comments a little bit. And Sad. we're going to go through... Um, you know, another post as well. We're, I'm going to actually uh, talk a little bit about the history too. Uh, so, especially with him, because a big part of his history was the Monopoly on Violence film. So, we're going to talk about that. Um, but he's not the only person here who I actually uh, desires to, uh, I have a desire to uh, address because someone else who I thought uh, was a friend and who uh, had otherwise, I never had any bad interaction with, always was kind. We took him to dinner. We had, you know, Totally great conversation. I have no idea where it's come from. We're going to talk about him too. He's connected with Pete, and I didn't know this until this came out. That yeah. the reason he had blocked me for, and again, blocking whatever trivial stuff. I'm getting to the root that this is someone who had secretly hated me, and I had no idea. And I was just whatever. I'm like, you're cool. Like, I, I want to support what you. Do and I even supported their um, their uh, police. You know, America's Crisis, the police film too. I supported that. Which still hasn't been finished. Oh, so, I didn't know that. I oh, actually yeah. haven't we're gonna heard have of that. some fun. Oh, well, we're gonna cool. have some fun. Uh, but so, that's produced by okay. Yeah, I actually didn't yeah. know about that. <laughs> yeah, Mark, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. So let me see. There's some people who, uh, out there who still believe that if they see someone working, they're working toward a cause that they may be sympathetic to and not do it for their own benefit. Um, 
you know, it's kind of see funny how that- he continues this <laughs> narrative that he yeah. never gave receipts or evidence for. Right. Total side of a freaking sophist. Like, Total sophist. And not only that, what's really yeah. like comedic to hey, me. Hey, notice, I didn't say status, Pete. Yeah, not I called status. you a sophist. No, you're just a, you're just a you're sophist. Just a sophist. <laughs> you're just a sophist. Now, and it's on top of that, he's say, sitting there like doing this projection thing where it's like, oh, they're doing it because it's for their own benefit. It's like, oh, yeah, okay, what do you have a Patreon for? Former free man beyond the paywall. He just sounds like a, a copy. Uh, what? You literally like- fundraise for your projects. <laughs> And literally beg for donations. Do you forget for about podcast, human dude? action? What you learned what at you the Mises about? Institute? Yeah. Literally, every single person acts for the yeah. preservation of their own life or in their own self interest, even when they think that they're going to save somebody, even when they think they're being altruistic, they're still doing it because they believe that's what they want to do. Exactly right. It's so like, don't freaking you yourself cover yourself do this, in some so false altruism. Compared to what? Everything is selfish. I just happen to also have values of why to promote peaceful parenting, unschooling, uh, property rights, non qualification, the whole gamut of different things. So it's it's really mind blowing that he is trying to sophistically, you know, virtue signal this way, and that's literally virtue signal. So it's it's pretty funny. So let's uh, let's keep going down here to something more. Um, substantive oh this i don't even know who this person was but bw was apparently a friend of my facebook didn't know that yeah, he was, mine too that, didn't know that he was uh, a secret hater until today I, I did Thanks, i will CW. say on my personal yeah. i did accept many yeah. many people that i actually didn't really know just because i was like oh okay we have mutual friends all yeah. right so oh here we go done so a lot of clean up. here here is someone we're going to be addressing too so chris yeah chris, chris okay chris um this, this is, really surprised this me is really today. surprising yeah um, considering what we're going to be showing about you after this. So I, if you eventually watch this, buckle up because you're about to be exposed for what kind of person you really are. So, rude. so thank you for this opportunity to show so others how much of a liar and backstabber you are. So Chris here was, of course, the spearhead on the Monopoly on Violence film. And apparently he's lampooning us saying, oh, we're going to have to kiss a lot more celebratory and ask to appear relevant now. What does that have anything to do I with what we do? I would love evidence. We, cr- we literally show create me how I do this stuff. all the time. Yeah, it's 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 literally what we do. We Music, memes, events, physical merchandise, comics, educational videos. <laughs> um, what do you, it, this is absolutely mind boggling. So we're going to be addressing Chris uh, in, in just a short bit here. I'm just going to go on down. Um, yeah, so he's he blocked me and now is telling lies behind my back or behind the block. Um, yeah, I blocked you because you're clearly an unsafe person, and I'm not going to have an unsafe person in my life sitting there and making unbacked assertion after unbacked assertion after unbacked assertion, denigrating me, my work, my friends, and the people who are doing amazing work for liberty, including the people at LPMC and including many of the great people who are, you know, obviously friends. Pretty sure, otherwise. Pete, you told many lies behind us yeah. right here. Yeah. <laughs> we just went through several of the lies. Yeah, we're, we're going to. So, OK. So in addition to that, we're going to let me see this other uh, video here. I just want to make sure that I don't miss anything. OK, so this was the other the other post. Oh, uh, this is kind of what kicked yeah. off uh, yesterday. So right? he said, oh, Jack promoting killing politicians is not my toy to big art. Um, I don't even know what you're talking about, dude. Where's the politician? Where's the politician, dude? You put together this original meme. I just remade it as a point of self-defense. You said, oh, government power. And I literally pointed self-defense involves more than just the state. Uh, duh. Uh, yeah, you could actually have private that. defense. That's besides a great the state. meme. I love that. You put that one over your head. Yeah. Because maybe you left the idea <laughs> that people can actually do things outside the state. Oh, I don't know. Oh, oh we can only stick to be a state. Oh, I mean, his meme itself oh. was just like his yeah, post. It was sophistic and yeah. lacking context. Yeah. It was, uh, do you actually have the original meme that was showing? Um, um, no, I don't have the original meme with me. Okay. So. Could you go back to it? I, just, I, I might. Yeah, let me see. Uh, go back. Yeah, the re- original. Yeah, so the original. Oh, yeah, go ahead. The original, yeah, you can say it. Okay, so yeah. the original was like in the third panel, instead of uh, obviously the ANCAP, he's strapped because you stay strapped, you know, it's right. way shallow. Okay. But um, so he, he instead of saying, I warned you, it's the I don't know SJW uh, man, right. yeah, female the, the thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, they I don't know. The uh, grabbing yeah. yeah grabbing government power and successfully killing the ANCAP with the bat. Right. Which first of all, like <laughs> it's a bat with spikes. How I mean, so commie, right? Like yeah, just pick it up, whatever you got. 
you got an AR <laughs> over here. <laughs> you got a, <laughs> an actual AR-15. Yeah, exactly. 30 rounds. You know? So but I really like actually the, what you did because you actually showed the context of like the compared to what? Of what we're advocating for. We're advocating for self-ownership. Right. And when it comes to government power, what this meme is not is trying to say is like, oh, you won't use government power at all. And therefore, if you don't use it, you're just going to be killed when it's missing the context of like, oh, isn't there a way to defend yourself and voluntarily find friends and group up with others who know how to defend themselves against the state? Yeah. Look at people in Vietnam. Look at people in the Middle East who actually got up and like, oh, my God, we're being invaded. We got to do something. Right. There's so many people like. This is ridiculous. And it just shows his mentality there that he has really shifted so much from the 2019 Pete Canonas that I met. That was I really admired. I thought he was really cool. I thought he was well spoken. I liked how he he spoke eloquently. Um, And the shift to me has been, in my opinion, if. I mean, I could go into psychoanalysis now, but if you have more it's, things, yeah, to, I would say let's say uh, it for, for later because there's a lot to cover. Sounds good. Yeah. So, um, so just you know, just scrolling down because I wanted to just pick out some things. So, yeah. Again, this Lance, I don't even know who he is, but apparently yeah, that was another snake in the grass because he was friends with me, pretend to be all, all uh, buddy, buddy. Oh yeah, yeah. And then he comes in, he's like, you know, basically saying, oh, you know, I think we're gonna see something later. Oh yeah, pizza. He invented the tax agent stuff. Me. What have you ever done? Um, I, I see. I don't understand what this thing is because. <laughs> When I was with Anarchy Ball, I created the taxationist theft viral meme that kicked off a major wave of, of other people copycatting that. It was the viral thing. And maybe people see this because I posted it. I, I screenshot the time because, as always, whenever uh, I do something that's you know I really like, I like to have the evidence just in case someone tries to question it or downplay me, which they often do. Because a lot of people like one-upmanship. They like to be like, oh, who are you? What are you doing? Because they're literally stuck in their probably alcoholic uh you know, kind of a, a derived stupor that they've been, you know, stunted in since 15, that they still think it's like a high school locker room or something. And they think they have to like one up with you with everything. So I like to keep a little bit of evidence just in case someone decides to try to make lies about me or, or try to downplay that. And I'm like, okay, that's not true. Here's why. Again, it's not to be like, oh, here, shoot my own horn for everything. It's that some people do not understand the causal relationships yeah, about how context. things happen. You want to yeah. know, oh, what tactics work? What don't? What was successful? Who's influencing yeah. what? And I love talking about those things because there's many great people. But again, to him, taxation of theft is right. it's viral for a reason. There's a reason so yeah. many status know about it now. I mean, that tells you how prolific it is. And of course, it's not all on Jack's shoulders, it's but not, no. it's more just saying he did help to kick off that trend through the anarchy ball page which at the time had what over a hundred thousand at the time i don't well like when that. i did that if it was in 2016 yeah. february it, it would have been probably in the 50 60 thousand range or something like that for mm-hmm. the page file but again yeah. it, was, it was a mega viral so then people are resharing right. millions, of, millions of engagement so other time. big pages could have picked up a reshare oh, it, it got picked but up the re-shared. point is right yeah you made that first meme that yes, yes was then reshared many 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 times of course so <laughs> so it's just giving context is all right and it really frustrates me when I mean, I've seen him use bring this up many times and also others and say, oh, yeah, this is Jack. He'll just constantly bring up taxation. Stuff. Yet another ad home, yet another lack of argument and evidence, just right. trying to denigrate someone when you, you're you not actually <clears throat> criticizing us. What have I actually advocated for that was incorrect? What has actually Jack advocated for that is incorrect? All you have is, oh, we're not aesthetically pleasing to you, to your subjective whatever whims of what you think is whatever not cringy that's all you can say oh you're cringy oh you're a pussy oh you're a little bit what are you like middle school high school do you have an argument why don't you join the state in the republican party and stick to your sophistic arguments there oh wait that's what you're doing oh okay got it i see now right it's it's it is so absolutely crazy so he's like oh guys guys so at one point on twitter i wrote there's a libertarian culture as in i described that there's common things that people do say engage with events there is and it exists when you see what common experiences people have at libertarian events conventions of clothes the merch the discussions the smoking that was a joke because a lot of libertarians like to vape or i they don't go outside get what's wrong circles. with that statement like why yeah. is he making fun of you i mean like it that's doesn't so make any sense. um accurate i don't it's understand like, it's what i'm saying it's an identity not a culture it's an in-group okay um 
do I really care about whatever made up definitions you're going to, you know, try to throw out there, try to dismiss whatever it is. There is a literal I would say it's, it can mass be phenomenon of in group, right. In group yeah, and culture. It can be both. Yeah. It's, it's, it depends on who you're talking to, right? For some, it's an identity for some, they choose to be an in group preference. And for some, it really is a culture. Like you think of the people who are like, um, they have the thin blue line flag, but they also have don't tread on me. Right. Like, Right. That's an example of libertarian culture pervading the fact that you can have someone who uh, for a long time was a Republican say taxation is theft. Yes. That's an example of libertarian culture pervading. Going they up. may not identify themselves as libertarian, but that is an example of a culture. So, and these things had never existed before. You go back 20 did. years ago, you did not have <laughs> coverage of the B word boys on you know national news. You didn't have Jack Dorsey posting anatomy of the state. Yeah. You didn't have Joe Rogan having multiple anarchist comedians talking about right. liberty. You didn't have Jordan Peterson bring on Bob Murphy to talk about Austrian economics. Yeah. You didn't or have, Ben Swan talking about ANCAP right, and then ben he got Swan, let go. I right. That. Ben Swan talked about ANCAP Truth on major cable news and truth and media, yeah, and ben then Swan's he got cool. fired because of that. I mean, yeah. this is it's so absolutely disconnected from reality. Yeah, and then the like, Overton window is shifting yeah. and the libertarian culture has spread. Like the fact that so many people can say and the Fed, you can go to a crowd, right. a room of just all Republicans. You don't even have to be libertarian at all. And they'll say, yeah, and the Fed and the Fed abolish the income tax. That shows yes. you how much the culture has spread. The or culture abolish of liberty. the ATF. That wasn't a popular phrase until... Yeah. Much, much recently, much more recently. Right. So he's like, oh, that's why he's like, I'm going to pass my culture, my kids here, kiddo, smoke up. Yeah, because you never heard of people who smoke and their kids and smoking <laughs> later as adults, right? You're, if you have pipes and you model that behavior and then kids model that later. I mean, this is like stuff that is like psych. You could Google this in two seconds and look up the psychology of past epigenetic behaviors. But Pete is so disconnected from reality. He thinks that he's actually making a point. It's, it's actually pretty bad. Yeah. So look at that. Oh, so here's here. Daniel Lang, right? Oh, top lobster. Okay, yeah, more like bottom feeder is over here saying, did he get the okay from his wife to post this? Again, lowbrow humor, uh, uh, caveman humor, because but they got nothing. there's no actual substantive There's nothing critique. substantive. Where is the constructive or substantive nothing. critique about it? Nothing. <laughs> it's, it's literally all just personal attacks and nonsense. And, of course, lies meant to be like, oh, you, you know, don't like Jack. So I, I think mm. we're going to, uh, you know, get into this um, – Oh, see, so yeah. Oh, this is wife as bad as he is. I'd say worse. Okay, this is... I mean, again, I'm just going that. through the comments. Look, yeah. Can you just go yeah, back to go. that? Let, let me just show you how quickly... It, let, let's get it. Uh, yeah. This is a great lesson in philosophy, right? right? Hey, guys. L please make sure to believe things based on reason and evidence. So this guy goes, is this wife as bad as he is? Someone goes, I'd say worse. Doesn't give me any evidence, reason or evidence. Okay, totally agrees with it, believes it automatically. This is literally public school programming. Yeah. You just believe things without even questioning it. There you go. That's the kind of followers you attract. Your vibe attracts your tribe. If you're going to denigrate people, if you're going to call them names, that's the kind of people you're going to attract around you. Yeah, no, I completely agree. So, I think I think Pete's modality of speaking has literally dumbed down those who continue to yeah. listen and listen to him. Because honestly, all he does is repeat assertion after assertion. I've read his articles. Go look for yourself. Again, don't believe me. Go look up his articles. No citations to anything. There's no data, empirical, anything back at what he says. He just repeats, repeats, repeats. And as always, with that type of tactic, you repeat something enough, it becomes a truth. That's why the government uses it for brainwashing, right? They get kids to repeat the pledge. They get kids to repeat, you know, all the things. Well, types and that's what he's trying say. to do here. Repeat, repeat, repeat. He's repeating these lies. Yeah about you over and over yeah. oh look at jack he's so cringe he'll always bring up how he made the taxation theft meme oh he this is the second time in this post he mm -hmm. said it oh he had a chance to confront me at tom's house but he didn't he's just right. a pussy he's just a little bit okay so right. just repeating the same old lies without it yeah this and this is what's crazy so pete here is he's like oh he was in the same room with me two weeks ago and i and didn't bring think to bring up anything again why would I be confronting you and disrupting? We literally my made eye contact many times, party. and Pete like avoided what? eye contact with us too. Yeah, this this is. I thought it was mutual that we both didn't want to. Yeah, like, like the mess idea up Tom Woods' house party and not mess up, you know, all the events going on. Yeah, and it was like forty. What? It was a smaller group too than last year. It was like yeah. thirty people no, or it was, so. It so 60, it's even 70. more intimate. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like. 2,500 people like at the Tom Woods 2000th, right? It's where there's so yeah. many people. It's a small house. I mean, not a small house. It's a, you know, living room in his house. It's, 
<laughs> yeah. Well, he's like, oh, yeah, here's a pussy. I don't want pussies on my team. I mean, what kind of nonsense is this? I mean, clearly you don't want pussies on your team. That's how you can't maintain a relationship, obviously. Let's keep going. So, <laughs> so again, um, let's see here if there's anything else of interest. I just can't remember well, here. Sam, well, he brought like... this on himself. I'm not always going to hmm. spread lies. What? What's the lies, dude? What's the lies? What? Okay. I like how he asked for context. Yeah. See, that's a philosopher. That's someone who's actually challenging. He's like, hey, maybe I'm missing the context. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. So Chris again, and we're, I'm going to address Chris too because it ties to Pete. This is so surprising. I think he's wide. Yeah, that it's very really surprising. Because again, nothing but positive. I took this man out to dinner. He's been in my house. <laughs> like. Right. What? Yeah, I know. Nothing right? but building. It is. Yeah, it's so bizarre. Yeah. yeah, Chris. Yeah, dude, what the heck are you even doing? You know, I, know. I would address you directly, but you know what? You actually were the one who blocked me first. So this is going to be addressed as is. So I think his whining is mostly sour grapes for not being taken more seriously. Other liberty aggregates have eclipsed him in popularity. And it's again that he's just drawing attention to how bad he is at this. These are just word what? salads. Are you talking about? These dude? are just a bunch of nonsense. I love <laughs> that other people were successful. Labels. That's what it makes me happy, you dingus. I want everybody to be successful. If there's everybody is more successful than me and they do great things like Eric July or Tom Woods or Michael Mouse or whoever, that is so wonderful that's the whole goal of my work duh what do you think i'm doing this for do you think i'm doing this because i'm just trying to like you know do something to like put a badge in my shirt or something like that i want liberty dude i, mean, I want they already said what make it they think you're doing it for yeah. they so, just call it they just label you a narcissist they yeah. just say that you're just doing everything for the benefit of yourself, which right. we already broke down. Everyone's doing things. Yeah. In the Nobody of wants themselves. an inspiring wall of text memes, taxation of coasters, truly awful music or comic books like what he writes. Don't get mad. Get better. Well, I, of course, love constructive criticism. I think he wrote this like, I do oh, like getting better. he felt so good about how he wrote it. Like right. you can tell. Yeah. Like it is. It just it's just literally like a politician. They're like, yeah. I just made this grand speech. But they actually didn't say anything substantive. No, not a single like, thing. Like you could join the White House press secretary over here. Yeah. Oh my. So um, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's so crazy that that he would say such you know purely unbacked nonsense things that are just your subjective preferences about what you like or don't like. Um, despite the fact that the reason you know me is because you were an anarchy ball when you saw the work I was doing and others were doing to actually wake people up, and that's how come we're gonna see later how Chris actually messaged me about monopoly on violence we're gonna go through all those messages you just wait so it's gonna be real good so this guy i don't know oh, who this guy is but he's like some of your water of course he's a, a few inside the lp have warned me that jack is a narcissist what <laughs> what what about me suggests narcissist in terms of actual action right actual action of narcissist is someone who doesn't care about anybody else yeah doesn't just, have any empathy no empathy yeah. doesn't support anybody else doesn't do anything to promote anybody else just wants everything about shames themselves. denigrates what? others makes it about themselves right. doesn't offer the context of what the other pro oh just yeah. like you pete oh w weird are you projecting narcissism over here Right. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's pretty wild. So um, it says my only memory was him and a few others attempting to glam. To glam oh, I'm hand. sorry. That wasn't Pete. That was Alan there calling you right. a narcissist. My bad. Attempting to glam. Yeah, it wasn't Pete. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, same, you know, kind of feel, I'd say. To gland hand a disinterested Tom Woods so while I hopped in his car to go get Denny's and leaving hmm. them all bewildered as to who this nobody in Tom's car was. What? When was this? I'm so confused. So, okay. So you mean to tell me that like before. after Yao Rev, when we, you know, had our, uh, that was really fun though. We did, uh, cause we were in our friend's car and we had like a race in the rain. So he, yeah. like, he had his minivan and we were trying to go to like a Waffle House really late at night. Cause obviously Tom likes Waffle House. And you know, it was like one after the other was closed. Like one of them, the people were not wanting to work. Like, yeah, we have too many dishes backed up. And my friend was like, show me the dishes. And they went back there and he looked like, okay, they're full of dishes. And they're, they're just, this is just like, I think it was like, uh, oh, when who, they were not wanting to do anything. Was that Victor? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. He, oh, of course So, yeah, yeah. So basically was, Tom was, was tired because he went to multiple waffle houses and neither was able to see us in time. Yeah, yeah he, he was it, actually really tired and yeah. frustrated that. <laughs> Nobody wanted to serve me. He's like, this is Waffle House. You're open 24 hours. Just why would you reject a customer who's willing to pay? Clearly, it seemed yeah. like those people wanted to go home and didn't yeah. want any customers. Yeah, they, 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 they was, it was just like basically read, the workers there the were room. like, now nah, we're done. We're not yeah, serving I read anybody. The room. You know yeah, too bad. They just want to hang. So in any case, it, you know, our plans for Waffle House was frustrating. But we've, we've made other events. But we see, that's the context here. Yeah. <laughs> when you read this, 
There's right. no context. No it's context. just this generalization. Oh, he tried to attempt. See, he I have tried. to use a British he accent. Whenever Solomon. whenever I read something sophistic, I feel like I have to use a British accent. So here we go. My only memory of him and a few others attempting to gland hand a disinterested Tom Woods while I hopped in his car to go get Denny's right. and leaving them all bewildered as to who this nobody in Tom. Okay. I just like. It's just so funny because it's just like not actually saying what's happening. Exactly. Exactly, yeah. Matthew. It's, yeah, Matthew Butts got it. It's I hope that's not your real last name. <laughs> I love, I love parents... Butts. Great Butt. Great Butt. But I agree. Yeah. It's always protection. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So Pete's like, I've seen that look of bewilderment. I, he writes in a way that is like so dramatic. He, it's like a li- like a drama queen. Well, but like, and also here, <laughs> it's so crazy. Pete wasn't actually there in he this case. There. He has no idea. So what somebody about. who was interested in truth would actually be like, oh, what happened specifically? But he just adds on and says, yeah, <laughs> whatever. Right. It, it, I, it's, it's just crazy. I agree with Pete here. Oh, here's something around. Pete. Tom's one of the best people I've ever met. Being around him makes one a better person. Yeah, Tom's great. Exactly. So why are you trying to start fights with me at Tom's house, Pete? Why are you trying to say, oh, why aren't you confronting me and calling me a pussy for not trying to confront you at his house? Is that how you treat friends? You disrespect friends by trying to start. And what's funny is the same could be said, right? If you're claiming out here that we're just saying lies about you, Mm -hmm. why didn't you confront us? Right. Right. We're the ones lying. Right. Right. Why didn't you confront us? Actually, you made eye contact with me several times and avoided it. Okay. So what, what are you talking about? You, you, we're lying behind your back, but you can't confront us either. So which is it? Right. It, it's it's really quite wild. I this is this is the statement of someone who is trying to look tough. It's it sounds like a middle school bully, really. It sounds like a middle school bully who's like, yeah, guys, I, I'm real tough. I can beat up somebody. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a pussy. It's like what? But dude, in you're addition, in this man, post, dude. also what trying to act like a victim as right. well. Right. And trying to act in like addition. a victim. Yeah. Yeah. So. I don't know what the figure Terry stuff is. I've actually never been a part of figure Terry, and so some people might be confused by that. I don't know. Okay, yeah. uh, do, 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 do. Just looking to see what else is juicy in here. Anything else juicy? I can't even read what that says. I don't care. Da, da, da. Yeah, I think we, you know, hopefully those watching, you can see that so far, you know, already yeah. in these, okay, yeah, 40 minutes, that we've gone yeah. through the different contexts of both uh, well, mainly our relationship with Pete so far. Yeah. So, so okay. So now that we've gone through just the background context, now we're going to get to some real fun stuff. Um, let me just see here. Oh, yeah. About history. So now we're going to do some, uh, some history. And that history that we're about to do is going to be starting about um, – you know, dealing with this nonsense idea of like, oh, this guy's a nobody. He just drops names and this or that. So to just debunk this, I'm not debunking this like robustly. I'm not going to talk about every single thing I've ever done, stuff like that. It's not the point. The point is, is to deal yeah. with the specific persons right. it's and specific why person. they would yeah. know that they're lying because it's their specific interaction with me. So we're going to go ahead and go through that history right now. So And it really shows you the two-facedness. Oh, the two-facedness. And it, you're it really to shows shot. our your perspective, be right? Dropped. Because what you're seeing here, this is our experience with this person and with these people. Nothing but positive coming to us for advice, whatever, support, promotion, things like that. Yep. So nothing ever was said to our face by either of these people that they found us cringe, they didn't like our work, that they thought we were just calling everyone status. Like no actual meaningful constructive criticism ever. Yeah. And, and just to remind y'all, again, this is uh, us hanging out here at the Mises Institute. Yeah, here that's when is, we met of for course, the first me time. And my goof, I had a terrible yeah. haircut there. I'm sorry. I, I really, I went too short. Uh, there's, um, I you know, man, Chris right I here. So right? Oh, there's you. You got some cool hair. A there's Pete. Face oh, look at Pete. Then. Oh, you should, you're a tough guy, huh? Okay. And well, then, of course. I will, I do have to say, yeah. I can't feel a little, just like sadness. You know, it, it's sad when. You think someone's your friend? Yeah. Both of these sad. people, Chris. I thought he was my friend. I let him in my house. I bought him food and bought him dinner. Okay. <laughs> like Pete, I thought he was my friend. I, I gave him a hug. I really thought he was a cool dude. I treated them both like bros. Uh, the other guy here, he's cool. I yeah. haven't seen anything. No problem. Yeah, of course. Um, he's, cool. He still seems cool. Yeah. But yeah, I just, I can't help but make me feel a little sad just seeing that someone would just go behind your back like that instead of just giving you a chance to actually yeah. go to your face. Yep. Like that's, it's so frustrating, right? When you 
when you're already supporting someone and then all of a sudden out of the blue, they're like, I don't like you. And in a conflict, they bring up all this stuff and judgments that they thought about you that they never told you before, you know, and that's the part that's, you know, just um, really sad here. And you can even see Pete's face like none of this stuff was happening to them. I really thought Pete genuinely liked us back. I mean, look at his face here. I thought he was really warmly smiling. So yeah. anyway. Well, the truth is now about to be unveiled. So you know what? <laughs> Thanks, Chris, for this opportunity to go through your history with me because without you making so many different shaming things, I was just satisfied never, you know, taking any type of uh, credit or taking any type of, you know, personal uh, piece in it. I was just satisfied yeah, being a part true. of the documentary no and pay. being in it and, uh, no pay. and helping you out. Uh, you know, of course, yeah, obviously didn't take any pay for this uh, to help make totally sure that everything was done. Free right. consultation really goes against yeah. your lie yeah. about my husband mm. that he just doing everything for himself okay everything for myself yeah just huh? everything for himself yeah. take doing things without pay helping you hours and hours on the phone talking over text yeah just a selfish like piece of crap right it, I mean, it's absolutely absurd here that you would say such so a messed. thing that you got both <laughs> you would say such a thing being involved in this on mafia and violence especially considering the fact that you reached out to me yeah. So why would you reach out to me if I'm a stupid nobody nothing who's a joke cringe It'd person? It'd be a little huh? different if it, was, if it was like Jack would, hey, Chris, I, I heard you're doing this. Please, please include me, please. Yeah, no, I mean, no, it was you, you coming reached to out us. To me, you and he would have made a mistake, too, yeah. if you hadn't intervened, actually. Yeah, and, and, and actually, and the reason why they reached out to me is because I have experience in production. Obviously, anybody who's watching this and knows our work sees all the pictures and videos and other stuff we do, and it's, it's even more than what you see because I do other stuff, too. So... The idea that I'm just this nothing nobody is completely counterfactual with reaching out to me, seeking help to produce their film. And on top of that, I wasn't credited. I didn't want it. I didn't ask for it. And I didn't ask for any money or anything like that. I just was like, I want to see you guys succeed. And you're going to see all this too. So I'm not, you know, I'm James O'Keefe here. I'm saying something and I'm just going to keep rolling. So, all right. So he comes to me and says, and, you know, I said, what's shaking you over here? He says, remember the documentary? What's that? Last year, the idea of making an ANCAP documentary. Oh yeah. When Chase. So Chase, I don't want to even bring okay, up his name. He's another person who got removed in the past. <laughs> you know, let's just keep him in the past. He says, yes, I still have the Excel file you know, cause we were planning another ANCAP documentary. What about, he said, the one yeah. I'm starting is called stateless. So there's Chris saying the one I'm starting is called stateless. And I said, intriguing, tell me more. Ooh. So what happens then? Let's see here. Um, so he says, if nothing else, an interview subject at the comic book, but ideally as a producer, OK, he's asking me to be a producer of this film again. Am I just this stupid? Nobody, nothing. Yeah, you're just a stupid nobody who, with insignificance, no huh, success. Nothing oh, at all. hey, Chris, no. why did you go up to someone who's just so insignificant? Are you dumb? Why would you make someone who's so insignificant a producer of your documentary? Yeah. It just, oh, maybe hmm. G because you're lying and you really knew he had the skills to do it. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's really uh, disheartening to hear that you would say such bold-faced lies. Yeah. So he says right, here, man. yeah, helping to plan the script and to promote the adventure, go fund me in the marketing of the film. Interested? Mance is on board. So again, you see right here, Mance is on board. In other words, I was the other person on the Monopoly and Violence film who they sought out as original producers because Chris was spearheading it. And because I had been in the group for talking about a prototype precursor thing that didn't pan out because of someone else who ended up being very unscrupulous and ended up getting blackballed from the Mises Institute and a bunch of other stuff. So here's what I said. Again, does this look like someone who's a crazy narcissist person who doesn't know what they're doing? I said, fascinating. I do have quite a bit of experience and connections towards the end. I certainly have a huge support of the end result of the documentary. I guess the main thing is just my own time and ability within the scope of what you're looking to do, what are the parameters of what you're envisioning, i.e. length, location, screen, distribution, etc. He said, I can send you a six page summary, but it's a 90 minute documentary whose end purposes appear on consumer streaming media. I want people to, to flip through Amazon and have their first introduction volunteers and be to be one this well presented and professional look, not like most YouTube vids. OK, so he was serious. I was like, OK, this is great. I would love to see this. I, that would be amazing. Right. I mean, of course, you want a documentary that really actually encapsulates anarcho capitalism, voluntarism and, and all those good things. I wanted to see it happen. So. I said in this quarter, nice, you're getting serious. So after this, we started to change, you know, where we were talking. We we're no longer going to be talking on Facebook. We were going to be taking our 
commentary via email. So let's go through some emails. Again, this is Wednesday, January 2nd, 2019 at 12.09 p.m. Again, nice little timestamp there. Jack, happy new year. I hope your holidays are pleasant. I am ringing in the new year with some very good news. Oh, wait, am I on the wrong one? Oh, wait, no, I'm on the right one. Maybe I'm on the right one. Oh, wait, is this the right one? Oh, now i got to take a look. Let me just click. Okay, no, maybe it's right. Do, 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 do. Okay. I don't know. I'm like, oh, I hate when I go things out of order. Okay. So, okay, he says, I'm ringing the New York figure news. Our LLC is now active. Oh, wait. Hmm, this is missing the uh, the predicate information. Maybe I just hit this wrong. Sorry, guys. I, uh, you know, put this all together very quickly from there. Uh, Thing. Oh, well, whatever. I'm just going to go through the slides, and if it ends up being out of order, then it'll just loop back. Okay. Um, so let me go back to the... Let me see here. Where'd it go? Okay. So basically, behind the scenes, I was helping him set up for um, the his initial corporation's um, establishment. Um, so essentially... He wanted to uh, work with me as attorney. I said, no, I can't do that because um, I can't actually uh, work with you because I'm not you know, barred in their jurisdiction. I'm not in the arena where you're actually doing your stuff at. So I said, here, let me show you what you can do, some legal services, this or that. And I helped set up their stuff. So basically after that, he said um, – you know, I, I, Happy New Year. I'm ho I hope your holidays are pleasant. I'm bringing the New Year with some very good news. Our LLC is now active. I'll set up banking ASAP. This email is preferred email address since we got a new domain. I'm deleting live stateless soon. So they had a predicate website. We met with Robert's production contact. Got a bunch of filming costs. He does do some post work. So during his estimate too. I like the contact. We'd like to use him for future work, but we'll be unable to afford him for this film. I had no way to gauge what people's response to the craft will be. I'm budgeting the the project with less travel and more DIY approach. Just because they're going to Liberty Con. Jerry looks like we get most people who wanted to talk to their elsewhere. We're going to Acapulco first. This gives us an extra month to prepare production. There are at least a dozen people we'd like to interview there. Our plan is to go get a ton of footage, make a sizzle reel, be on the craft pitch. I think if people see what we're really talking about, the aesthetic and the aim of the film, I'd like to more donate. If people donate after seeing that, we can put more resources into remaining shoots and edit. Rob is working on the website. We're going to agree on business cards and people start asking people if that's that he's interviewed. If we can film an interview with them, we have 12 big names. We plan to ask first from Paul Todd Woods, other Misesians. We are confident two thirds will say yes. Then we, we will use the juice and all the big names together, interviews, subjects, participate. Now you're caught up with what we're doing. Await your ideas about what we're doing and how much you think you'd add to it. So again, Chris was obviously uh, communicating with me, trying to figure out what's the best angles on producing this film from the get go. And I was there helping with those things. So, Let's take a look here at the response. So I said, hey, Chris, this is great that you he that to hear that your company filing went through. Again, I just you know made sure to tell Chris, hey, make sure you have a corporate filing because, again, you want to have legal protection. You want to have all your ducks in a row and checks because, again, if you get if someone comes after you, you want to make sure that everything is taken care of. So um, Anarchapogo will be a great place to shoot for sure. If you're planning to shoot soon, then you definitely need to have ready your releases for the video, which may include individual interview releases and proper release for shooting a particular location. This is something you need to get with a lawyer on for those forms. There are templates out there, but maybe wise to ensure accuracy, completeness for your purposes with a lawyer. The other important aspect about shooting a Eric Puck with your footage, you may want to be sure you oh, well. that you triple back your content, physical and online storage as border agents can seize your equipment on just a reasonable suspicion standard. Again, that's a very serious issue. This may be less of a concern of flying, but it's still a concern. When you finish banking setup, branding will be an important next step for putting together a pitch credibly. That's something we can discuss further. Also, I hope you enjoyed the Ankat Grind music we did produce. If you're not oh, seeing yeah, it, you that was that here. time. That was fun. Right. So again, <laughs> yeah, we were just uh, swapping. So you're stories. going through basically right. the history of him oh. talking about the production right. and getting your help. Yeah. Okay. And this is actually, we're about to get to some good messages because it's actually going to show a little bit about my character, about what they talk about name dropping. It's going to be wonderful. So Jack, you know Berwick, right? What kind of help can you give us regarding access to the event or lodging? Is there anyone you're friends with who you think you'd be a good candidate for interviews? Okay. So again, he's asking me about access to people and who's good candidates for interviews. Does that sound like someone who he believes is just a nobody, just nothing a garbage? Sim. You meet yeah. them once and you just name drop yeah, them. Yeah, just like name they once said. and name drop, dude. Okay. So now this is what's really good Such because you're about to see if I'm just this narcissist name dropper that I would just lie or make up stuff. But let's take a look. Hey, Chris, I know him, but I'm not super close to him. See, that's me saying, hey, I'm not super close to this person. I'm not name dropping pretending. I said, from what I understand, you could just try uh, – you could just message him directly on Facebook. You could try asking Dan Martin or Luis Fernando, uh, Fernando Borges. Again, I don't even know if that's how you pronounce it. Mises, again, at the time, they were – 
part of the orchestrating the event, which I knew because I was friendly again with those people at the time. And I had just casually known Jeff because I've been on Anarchast. So I believe they both have a hand in the organization, the Anarchapoco event. This request would be most credibly done if you have your branding up with the website. That that would be key to help you open the doors. In terms of people interview, I'd recommend it again. This was my interview list adding to it for Anar for um, the Monopoly on Violence film. So on this list, uh, we have Michael Malice, Michael Bullen, Carrie Weather, Ryan Griggs, Mike Humer, um, even though I don't agree with him on animal stuff. The philosopher Tom Woods, <laughs> Rob Murphy, Jeff Dice, Robert Higgs, Alex Adele, oh, Eric July, oh. Ron Paul, Angela Palatano, Walter Block, David Gordon, Jacob Horner, Bruce L. Benson. There are many more, but there's just some food for thought. Do you see even my name in there? Like, you, you know what I mean? Oh, I'm this narcissist, but I say who I do and don't know. And yeah. I'm not, and I don't put, oh, interview me in this, even though I did end up being interviewed. It was just people I, you found. It was people like, who I knew were generally good, good at communication messaging and principles I right mean, all these people you listed was everyone that met that bar for you so exactly i put together a solid list of people who mm -hmm. i believed would be a great <laughs> contribution great addition to helping present libertarian voluntarist anarchist values and that was it i i did what i could to help him and to try to you know get some food for thought and to make sure that what they did with their production did not lead to a misstep that would get them in legal trouble or would end up you know having footage lost or anything like that. Does that sound like again? I'm, I'm just doing this for myself. Am I asking for credit? No, I'm literally just wanting to help them succeed because again, I believe in the project and I still still think it's overall a great film. So yeah, absolutely mind-boggling that they would say this nonsense. I, I like how someone in the chat said, uh, right. "Ooh, I love history." Yeah, I agree. Ooh, yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah, we're going through history. <laughs> Ryan says, okay, ego driven news. That's something new. Not. I don't even know yet. <laughs> okay, All right. Know. So, next one. Jack, our website is up. I think we would benefit most from having to talk, having you talk to Lewis about Anarchapoco. What we're looking for is free access to the event to present anarchism in the best light possible. You hear that, guys? They wanted free access wow. to the event. Oh, my God. Oh, okay. Talking Look about freebies and mercy, baby. And favors. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, the favors. Oh, oh, you really didn't think about that when you decide to slam my name like that. Did you, did you carefully consider that I might have the receipts of all our conversations because – uh, maybe one day from my past experiences, I know people backstab me well, and try to call right. me out and try to lie about me that one day it might come in handy because someone might try to do what you just did. You're a snake. You're an absolute disgrace and a snake. And you should be ashamed of yourself. Yeah. Absolutely ashamed of yourself. Absolutely pathetic what you've become. Seriously. Nobody should admire or look up to you as a person for what you become. You have some serious soul searching to do for what you've done. You're disgusting. So, again, he's speaking to me, asking for my help. I doubt Luis can get us free lodging at the event, but it's worth asking. We also want to interview Luis and Berwick, among others. The sooner we get answers, the better. I appreciate you helping us out. Oh, you appreciate us then when we're helping you? Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, Looking and forward to interviewing look how you on quickly. The oh, you were just saying Jack is so quickly that when we're no longer serving you, how quickly you throw us in the mud. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's literally what you you did to us. Like, literally, that's what you did here. Yeah. And I hope that everyone's seeing, you know, everyone watching and those yeah. in the future watching this will see just how much you, Chris, and you, Pete, lied about yep. our names, lied about us behind our back, and to our face, pretended to be all friendly. Yep. Never uh, came up to us, never gave us a chance, like an actual friend would, to be like, hey, dude, uh, whatever is going on, right? If you think I'm cringe or if you think I can make better music or whatever, you never said it to my face. That makes you a coward and it makes you a liar talking about this behind our back. So that's why I'm just here to expose you. Yeah. <laughs> Give and, you the yeah and again, if you're watching this and you're appalled at this and you're shocked by this and you're seeing this again, feel free, screenshot, share it, rip it, share it. They need to know because I'm not a good engage them directly with this. Again, there's some of this is on public, so they may be, may be able to see it otherwise. I don't know. But I'm not going to surround myself with toxic liars like this. But there's everybody else is going to find out. There's nothing to engage. If, nothing some, to engage. if all someone comes to you is ad homs, just like you don't you don't debate someone like a leftist or SJW who's just calling you names. Right. There's There's nothing to debate. It shows you that they're not here for truth. They're here to just make generalizations about you and win the conversation, right? They just want to win. They're not really here to achieve truth with you. Because if they were, both Chris and Pete would have reached out to us and been like, hey, blah, blah, blah. I don't think whatever. 
and nothing. That's why this is so out of left field and extremely just sad, surprising, and disappointing. Yeah. So. All right. So continue. Hey, Chris, I'm glad to see the bones of your website up. That's great. I think adding more specifics about your goals, mission, vision will help your promotion ability. I think you should also link to various project pa slash pages for each person and what in the about us to add more credibility. I also recommend putting together a logo pack for what you will be formally using and placing that branding throughout the website. I'm unable to speak to anyone on your behalf of your project in terms of arranging any kind of deals as I'm not formally a part of your company and have not been hired otherwise. It would be problematic for me to ask in any capacity. I'm also not close with Luis. Again, Am I some narcissist claiming that, oh, I'm connected to everybody who do this? No, I say, hey, if I do know somebody I do, if I can do a favor because I can't, I, I'm honest about it. I think you will be taken most seriously by reaching out to Jeff and Luis yourself as your name is attached to the project and they're going to want to speak to those who have decision rights, not a middleman. Again, that's just business. They want to speak to the person who has decision rights. That said, if you want any help for a review of what you'll be messaging them, I am happy to read and offer feedback of what you intend to send them before you send it to maximize understanding. Looking forward to your next steps. Again, Pure, happily supporting, nothing expected. That's it. Yeah. So I just want to say, mm -hmm. like, so we're at the hour now mm -hmm. and we've covered a lot in this hour session. So I want to get to a close and summary. Well, I want to finish this. Is there first. anything else? I would that like you... to finish the, uh, the set if that's okay. Okay. So you, you want to go through the, I want to finish the, the messages. Yeah. Emails yeah, with yeah, them. Okay. Thank you. So just want to finish this real quick. So again, Jack. I finally got everyone to sign the operating agreement. Again, so I made sure I said, hey, guys, you got to make sure that everybody who's a part of this, managing members, got to make sure that they're you know, all part of the agreement so that, you know, all the decision rights are set. So which names me as the managing member with responsibility of financial matters. I've applied with GA Secretary of State for Status Productions, LLC to be a company. Should be official week. Have registered agent service. We'll get banking set up after the state issues our certificate. I prefer, and you know, it's funny, right? Because these are the people who are trying to criticize me about statism, right? But they're they're obviously using state services to have their corporation. Um, again, if you can understand that that you're working within a statist paradigm, then I, I think you can understand the difference between uh, calling someone a statist because they want more government and uh, you know just using it in abstractions. Yeah. So I prefer to use this email address going forward. Do you want to wait until we're official and bank before you can consult? Are you good to go? Again, they're coming to me, and I'm helping them. No, no, no compensation, no nothing. Just trying to make sure they get off on the right foot. And clearly, they like what I have to say because they keep coming back for more. All right. So I said, hey, Chris, that's great to hear. Excited for you. Did you end up using LegalZoom? I'll wait until after I can see the filing list to be official. Let me know when the online listing is up. I'll check the link. Once that is all set, good. I'm looking forward to seeing it can be of help, whether casually or officially. I hope you're pleasant Thanksgiving. Looking forward. So this, yeah, as you can see, as I said before, I think I had it in reverse order. I'm looping back in time. So this was actually before. Oh, okay, because I was like, if, I I know, I know. if you look at the dates, I did the last slide first by accident. I'm sorry. That's me. I'm goofed. I'm, you know, I'm obviously a bit righteously angry at these people, uh, but you're now seeing uh, what's going on. Okay. So this is the beginning. I kind of did reverse it. So I said, hey, uh, yeah, so I hope you have a pleasant Thanksgiving. Looking forward. So, okay. So that's the last one. And now, <laughs> sorry, I, I started with the first one. I goofed. Cause I was just, you know, fo like focused. So he said, happy new year. So this actually, so the last screen I did was the first screen kind of thing. So again, um, as you can see from this history of these people, I was literally from the beginning, the person they reached out to as a consult on the monopoly on violence film, help make sure they got off on the right foot, try to do within my capacity, what I could to connect them with, you know, whoever gave them advice where I couldn't. Didn't expect anything, didn't ask to be the one interviewed, didn't ask for pay, ended up being interviewed as long as it was well as fuck. And in the end, this is what I get as thanks from these people. I get them lying about me, trying to say, oh, you know, what do you do? What, you're nothing, you're, you know, you're garbage, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, because, oh, because I made a taxation death coaster, that's super cool. And I use myself. I mean, what is this nonsense? It, I, like I <laughs> just want everybody who's watched this again, if you're seeing this and you're saying, how could these people come to even say these things? Just know there are some people who really do only care about their perception of themselves of being cool and having power. And you know, it's, yeah, it's all about aesthetics. It's all about aesthetics. Well, it looks all just aesthetics, like the state, dude. right? What's the state into? Like they still have the whole like American process. Like even Joe Biden will go through and put his hand over his heart. They'll do the traditions. They try to look like they have decorum. They try to look like they're proper. They try to speak eloquently. Um, but ultimately, that's what they value more than truth. What they value more than human connection is aesthetic, whether you look cool or tough or macho or not. 
<laughs> so it's just uh yeah, yeah. i mean it, it is an absolutely uh, disgusting travesty what these people have done and again if you watch this if you see this feel free you could screenshot share rip upload i don't care uh whatever i hope they eventually see this i hope other people watch through this all and and I would like to preemptively say this again. If someone's like, oh, you said private communication. Dude, that was all business information. It's like the business corporate stuff. That's all public. Right. right? It's, it's public. It's public yeah. information. You go look it up in a, a corporate registry. You can see who's in the membership, the LLC. It's mm -hmm. public information. You follow the state. There's nothing in here that right. revealed. Pete's post was there's public. No, there's so. no private information that I shared in, in terms of, you know, personal financials phone numbers, names, days, address kind of th stuff where you like put together someone's idea. This is just purely communication because I'm not allowing a bunch of sophistic liars to sit there and denigrate, not just our work, because what they're doing goes beyond us. It really does. Yeah. It goes to everyone who is in the sphere. Well, because that first meme that we activism. showed with the government violence thing, it wasn't you, it was and caps in general, and also talking about the Mises Caucus people, that yes. anyone who's part of the LP Mises Caucus is acting contradictorily. Right. Just because we want to take over the Libertarian Party and change the messaging and make it actually principled. Which is a corporation, <laughs> by the way. The Libertarian Party yeah. is just a business. It's basically a, a not-for-profit business, essentially, where you fundraise. So it itself is not the state. It right. is actually a corporation now of course they engage with the state with political running yeah. and stuff like that but in terms of the 99 percent of the time messaging and other activities you know up until election day whatever it, you know it, it is <laughs> about messaging and leveraging that to wake people up and to engage people with those apparatus and again this is the final stateless productions official here which mm -hmm. mind you after that was all done and of course we did our interviews and everything else we happily shared their videos to all of our different pages and groups and lists and everything and of course we are honored to be in it and to be included to yeah. never haven't said otherwise. And you can see there tons of great people were in this video, absolute legendary people, you know, people who have really changed the world for Liberty and even someone As watching an aside, here too, right? I would still say it's a good documentary, assuming they didn't like, I, I would be, yeah. I would be even surprised if like there. Chris went in and he like takes out me and you. <laughs> no, they can't, cause it's on Blu-ray and stuff. And, oh, and, and okay, they do cool, that on YouTube, cool. it would, it would destroy the whole video. You can't oh, and the like views that. and stuff. Yeah, maybe okay. they could, but but basically aside from stupid. that, that documentary yeah. is a nice summary and encapsulation of what we're talking about of the anarcho-capitalism philosophy and the history of how that all happened. So I do think it's insightful. Because, yeah. you know, again, this is work that's totally separate outside the drama and way before. Right. <laughs> Hence our surprise. <laughs> right. So, you know, with all that to say, I hope you can see now more than ever that we are serious about the work we do. We're consistent. We're principled. Are we sometimes cringe? Sure. Yeah, we can make goofy stuff. Yeah. But hey, that's subjective, I got to right. say. And yeah, that's it's not sub truly it's like, oh, did I say something? untruthful right no okay you just think i look cringe okay cool okay wow okay yeah. so you what know, okay some people don't think i'm Big pretty wolf. some think people think i'm ugly i don't care like so everyone we, has their own subjective opinion right and and with that too i actually do want to give like a serious word of encouragement if you've been watching listening especially the whole time yeah don't let people like that like pete and chris these small-minded people who will just continually shame you and not be honest and not have courage in that way. Don't let them detract from your own growth. Again, I never got to where I was and today, like, you know, producing a really cool music video and other stuff like that by not learning to make mistakes. I made crappy videos. I made crappy memes. I made, you know, not as good music, whatever. I I've had made videos mistakes. that I myself cringed at. And I was right. like, true, I didn't like how I acted there, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But the thing is, is you don't get better unless you actually are practicing and engaging yeah, and, and you growing. just try. You right? have to try. Yeah. And that's what I liked about Chris. I liked that he wanted to try. I admire it when people say, maybe this is over my head, but you know what? I'm going to try this for Liberty. And that's another reason why I like Michael Heiss and LPMC, because he despite unseeming odds, success, he went but... and he worked his butt off and he built something amazing. And mm -hmm. I appreciate anybody who does that, who against unseeming odds, because as it is, we're not only hated by all the status, we're hated by the libertarians, right? You know, the whole inside joke. It's like, oh, you're libertarian? Okay, you're like, your worst enemy is the libertarian. We already have enough well, hate all around. I don't know about that. Well, a lot of... Uh, I, get lot, you know I, mean? I get the joke. I get the joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. But the idea here <laughs> is that we're trying to actually 
build based on camaraderie and support and kind words. It doesn't mean we like everything that everybody does. Yes, there's times that I'm going to be like, eh, I don't personally like a person's form of activism. But you know what? If it's benign, if it's principled, otherwise, okay, I don't care. If they want advice, I'll, I'll give it to them if they ask. But otherwise, my goal is to work on my stuff. And when someone else is trying to bring down me, my friends, my wife, or anybody else, I'm going to call it out. I'm going to defend myself if that person is doing so consistently and to a wider audience. And literally lying about you yes. behind your back, what he said that we're doing. Right. So again, <laughs> so, I, I don't dive into every it. single criticism. You know what I mean? I'm not going to sit there and be like, oh, I would never get anything done if I always respond to every little criticism I got. When it comes to, from someone who has a you know more significant following than you know your average little you know bot person on Twitter. Yeah, and we who publicly we know, associated right. with many times promoted both of their work. We have a history with yeah. who they themselves directly know what we've done with them, and then lie about that while themselves trying to seek freebies, while themselves yeah. trying to seek clout, while themselves sitting there and saying, "Oh, you know, you know, could you help me?" and then calling me that I'm I'm just some dumb nobody who's done nothing. Screw you. Yeah. You're cowards, you're hypocrites, and you're being exposed, and it ends now. You're done. You're toast. You're done. It's over. That's it. So I'm good sure luck with keep, your lives. I'm sure they'll keep going. Oh, well, I'm, I'm saying in you're, terms you're done of in terms of us, about and, us. Our, and the people we know you're, and the people we talk yeah. to, guess what? They're seeing you're your stuff. You're done slandering us they're, they're, and telling you're, you're, lies You're being shown for who you are, and they're going to know. And I really am going to enjoy the updates I get, Chris, from your – uh, the documentary that supported your, you know, your, the uh, police crisis documentary oh. that I financially supported too. So hmm. I'm looking forward to those updates that you haven't finished on time yet for your, your film. So oh. yeah, keep, keep us updated on, on how that's going, that. buddy. Thanks. Wow. And see if you had just told us to your face that instead of like acting all two faced being our friend and pretending that you like us when you don't really, we wouldn't have supported you on the documentary. Yeah, I wouldn't dude. support someone who actually dislikes me. So it just shows a lot that you would continue to, uh, just do it behind our backs and it shows that both of you are cowards. So yeah. anyway, I hope that um, like Jack said, this was insightful yeah. for anyone who caught glimpses of either posts or chats. I hope this just gives the context. Uh, and I just have to say, some people say, why are you focused on this? Why? Why? Yeah, it's just I drama. That yeah, yeah. That's yet another generalization assertion about it. Why? Because I care about the truth. Truth. Okay. I don't like when people are putting lies about me. And especially in this case, when I was so nice to them and financially supported them, you with all of your hours of work helping with that documentary, it's now personal. And it's something specifically that we both wanted to address when it's people that we publicly associated with and now are publicly shaming us behind our back. So we just had to put it out there. Hopefully it was helpful. And uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out, everybody. Yeah. And else? again, if any haters are watching or whatever, just do yourself the oh, favor. Please let me know. And please just let us know. Just remove yourself. Just take yourself out. I really or just I don't, say it to my face. Or just say it to my face. I'm so. T I mean, we looked through the list of the people who were on that, um, and it was it was really kind of sad that it was like several people who yeah. were on my friends list on Facebook. That's true. And would yeah. otherwise comment my stuff. Were mm -hmm. sitting there and shaming and lying and you know making up stuff about us right. on his thread while being two faced to us. It is. It is really something that people are that confident and comfortable with themselves that they think that they they just oh you know whatever you know I'm gonna pretend oh, to be nice said to them and then I'm gonna adjust. be like oh is Jack having audio issues? I think I, I think I'm hearing myself. Maybe I just uh, what I what really loud. Maybe it like cut off a little bit or something. Like that, but oh, we'll hear okay. later. Whatever. Right. I mean the thing is it may have cracked because I was just you know really loud with my you know with with them. So it, it's okay. just um, it's disheartening, but at the same time. Um, it's really helped to show who actually is passionate about liberty and principled and, and long-term oriented. Actually, and through the past couple of days, and yet another reason why we talk about it is I would like it actually showed us who our real friends were, right? Yes. The people who came out who were curious, like what happened, what's going on. These are the people that you know showed us that they actually care. So yeah. I mean, it, you know, thanks it's, to them. Thank, yeah, and thank you, <laughs> thank you for everyone who uh, was supportive. Especially, I'm not going to name names, but there are people who actually messaged me about this because I didn't even know originally where it started. Like when it, when this actually was starting, I didn't even know yeah, until someone so messaged it, me Pete's po oh, you podcast. You told me because right. I didn't know. And then they're like, "Oh, um, is Pete talking about you?" I'm like, "What?" And, I, and they sent me a time code. I listened to it. Let's do a couple. I'm like, "Wait, what?" 
He's like, oh, you, you people, stupid people just like post actually stuff memes and and they just post pictures of food. And I went to you know Peter Twitter before he lost his Twitter and it was like, dude, are you talking about us like this? And he's like, yeah. And then he like was literally going back and forth, like denigrating, shaming, dismissing. So guess what? Cat's out of the bag, dude. It's over. You're exposed. Your whole your whole scheme and sham's been exposed. I hope everybody watches back, takes those screenshots of those pictures and those messages, takes what you said and holds you accountable for the whoever little bit is because I'm I'm done. I don't want anything to do with you. I don't want to see your face. And by everyone, you, you mean everyone else. who's actually cares about the truth and right. cares, about cares about connection truth. and actual liberty. <laughs> right. I I am not going to address you because I don't want anything to do with you. I don't want to come in contact with you with a 10 foot pole. I'm done. Stay away. Stay away from my friends. Unless it's to apologize. It's, and well, actually explain yourself why you, you better, turn on you us better and send became an email first before that because I'm not coming near you. So and even then, it's it's going to be a lot. Same more thing that. to Chris. So, I mean, I'd love to know why yeah, the change. I'd like to know why. What specifically yeah. besides aesthetic, superficial things like oh, you're cringe. Yeah. And never coming up to our face to tell us that. If you think I'm just like posting too much, if you think my strategy is not enough, you just come up to me. But instead. You chose to be all or nothing. You chose to just assume malintent. You chose to just assume that we're just bad, selfish people instead of actually giving us a chance. So, well, yeah, if you want to apologize for that and explain, that'd be great. But if not, it's over. No more connection. Yeah. Well, personally, so. I'm just done because the things you said to me are just unforgivable. I just don't want anything to do with you. So have a nice life. Don't bother me. Don't bother anybody else in our, our friend circle or otherwise. And if I see you do, we're going to... Make sure that everybody knows exactly what you've done if they haven't already. We're going to make sure. We're going to tell them all. So don't think you're getting away with this. Don't be all cutesy on the internet and act all machismo and tough guy. What you've done was extraordinarily disrespectful of our relationship and others' relationships and the hard work that many put in on that film that you made and other projects and supported you financially on, on multiple projects with tens of thousands of dollars. You have spat in our faces and you should be absolutely ashamed of yourself. Ashamed. So I'm done. Okay. So hopefully everybody you else, this. you're cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody in the threads who's cool, you're cool. You're cool. You're cool. Yeah. But screw those guys. I'm done. So, all right. Talk to everybody. This is not something I normally like doing. As you know, we like having fun. We like playing games. We like talking about liberty and positive stuff. But when someone takes their lies and repeats them to that point oh. and tries to grandstand and then tries to alienate other people from us in that way with lies, the truth comes out and that's what's happening. Thanks everybody for hanging.